during my rugby career, I was obsessed with my potential, what I was capable of, how I could improve, how I could win more, how I could embrace every opportunity and make the most of every moment. But no matter what I did or where my path took me, it just seemed to go in the opposite direction. This is the one! Hey there, I'm Johnny Wilkinson and welcome to I Am. This podcast, I Am, is about revealing what we are truly capable of. It's about uncovering the true nature of who we are and what this can do for our experience of life. It's a topic so, so close to my heart. It was everything that motivated me in my rugby career, but actually far deeper than that, it's been the driving force of my entire life. We'll be releasing two episodes a week. There'll be a Tuesday and a Thursday episode. The Tuesday episodes are a space for me to give a bit of background information, some ideas, some thoughts that connect the dots maybe, a chance to let you know where the guests fit in and also to fill you in on the upcoming interview. The interviews will drop every Thursday. So this is episode one of hopefully many. I've already got great guests lined up and we're going to be exploring what makes us, us. But we're going to do that through all kinds of different lenses. Some of these might feel quite abstract. It just so happens that's the best way sometimes. But others will feel more tangible and familiar, maybe like food, physical health and others. All of these, though, have the same aim. And that is to open our minds and to lead us into a space beyond our conditioning where limitless possibility and potential exists. I really do feel that we all have this within us. We just simply need to find the trigger that turns us inwards. It may seem like a bit of a leap, a bit of a strange change in interest for me to move from rugby to what is definitely a more spiritual, holistic approach to life. But in fact, it's, it's not. During my rugby career, I was obsessed with my potential, what I was capable of, how I could improve, how I could win more, how I could embrace every opportunity and make the most of every moment. But no matter what I did or where my path took me, it just seemed to go in the opposite direction of where I wanted to be going and what I wanted to be feeling. Even at 24 years old, having ticked off every single goal in the list of the most ambitious targets I could set myself as a seven or eight year old, I couldn't believe just how empty that experience was. I would spend three hours a day sometimes just kicking balls around under the guise that it was about honing a skill and a desire to be the best and all these kind of things. And it solicited all kinds of amazing comments from people about dedication and desire and professionalism. But actually, it brought about a huge wear and tear on my body. And probably looking at it from a much clearer perspective now, probably 75% of that time was purely taking place in order to fill a gap in self-trust. It wasn't about improvement. It was about reassurance. It was about resolving fear. And all that energy spent was spent in the opposite direction to health and well-being. And we talk about growth, but growth is not of any interest to someone in survival mode. A really, really important moment in my life was around the age of about 26, 27. I had what was the biggest at the end of a long list of injuries, which put me out of my rugby career and left me with a lot of time to sit down and reflect and a lot of time to sit and dwell, if you like, in a hugely vulnerable space. Uh, For me, someone that was built upon being an achiever, to sit there feeling like you're doing anything but achieving definitely left me in a, a... the midst of a big challenge. It was in that challenge that the realisation, I guess, came to me uh, as I was facing things both mentally, physically and emotionally that I suddenly, it dawned on me that no matter what I was going to achieve, it just wasn't going to solve this horrendous turmoil within. It wasn't going to do it. It never had and it never was. I started to get some professional help and it was in the middle of some professional help that simply the name of the Buddha was mentioned and I was guided, I guess, to just go and do a little bit of research because, uh, as the person I was speaking to told me, that the Buddha was perhaps facing some similar conundrums as I was in his life. And 
went about overcoming them and and this transcendence suddenly i guess became an inspiration for me and also brought about a new perspective on where i'd been going with my life and how small it felt compared to this kind of journey and it was amongst buddhism and quantum physics and yoga that i also happened upon self investigation and the direct path uh, of spiritual development also and this is where i first came across my first guest of the series rupert spira and some of the stuff he talks about in terms of awareness and the identification we make with our physical bodies and minds just happened to land for me at exactly the right time and it's interesting with everything we've been discussing how he looks very closely at how we identify ourselves with our thoughts and feelings yeah how these thoughts lead us in that search for happiness but often very much in the wrong direction so there may be a few of you out there in fact there may be way too many who are wondering what the hell I'm talking about in general whether that might be about pure consciousness or awareness or indeed in this space here about non-duality so um I'm going to start with that non-duality side and and explain it as best I can. It's not as complex as it as it may seem, I, I don't think. It's basically the understanding that our experience of being individuals and separate from everything around us, which creates this kind of relationship with everything on an independent level, is actually derived from a deeper reality of experience that is everything is all one. And actually that all one is the awareness or is the pure consciousness where everything exists unbounded and it's quite interesting to look at it from a physical perspective even when you look at a tree to say well where does the tree stop and everything around it start there is no stop to the tree because the tree is part of the the roots into the soil the water come into the roots so therefore where does the water come from the water comes from the clouds so we get this complete system which takes its way all the way to the edge of the the cosmos and even with us in terms of our bodies trying to isolate where does a cell stop and another one start when you realize that even the membrane of a cell is porous and is letting things in and out it's measured that even our energy is uh, are connecting with other people's energies all the time and that when we breathe out the trees breathe that in and what we breathe in is what the trees are breathing out so you could argue that um as has been said before that one half of our lungs is is hanging on the branches out there this amazing understanding that even on a physical level we're all connected but on a deeper level the very deepest level there is simply absolutely no boundary between us and anything else and anything within us and in fact actually we are that whole we're not a small part of it we are that whole so the recognition of this true nature this consciousness and what have you is is the source of that lasting happiness and joy it's the the peace between individuals that respect and the support it's it's the basis of any sustainable relationship with the environment as well and it also correlates really really well with the experience of being in the zone on a rugby pitch where you just suddenly feel like you're no longer confined to this idea of a body this idea that i have a body and in my body i have a brain and in my brain i have my mind and in my mind there's little me it it completely switches round to feel like actually i'm more than that and that all these things are great but they're within they're not what i'm in they're within me and funny enough with we're talking about that rupert's one of the things that he says which is i think sums it up really powerfully in terms of uh, the possibility of what he's talking about is that the greatest discovery in life he says is that our essential nature does not share the limits or the destiny of the body and the mind i think that's incredibly powerful even as a a thought starter to just blow your uh, y- your old ideas clean out the water what is the one thing that everybody loves and wants above all else happiness yeah and in our culture we have been educated to to believe that happiness comes about as the result of the acquisition of some a particular circumstance a particular situation an, an object an activity a relationship we we think that happiness is the result of something that we do achieve acquire own etc and and as you say we then strive towards whatever we think 
for, for us will be the cause of happiness, whether it's being the best rugby player in the world or the best musician or the, having a family, well, whatever it is for, for us, we, we strive towards that. We, we, we've lost the understanding in our culture that happiness is the nature of being. Happiness is, is where we start from. Happiness is what we essentially are. It's not something we can achieve in the future by, by manipulating our thoughts, our feelings, our physical body, improving our performance. N- n- none of that leads to, to happiness, although we, yeah. we've been educated to believe it is. And, and we push and push and push and push for this elusive goal of happiness, which, which, which we is considered to be in, in the far distance. No, happiness is the, is the very nature of our being. And, and in fact, let's take a situation in, let's just say, football. You, you, w- w- while the game is building up, there is tension expectation you're going towards something that that's not a state of joy it's a state of expectation when the goal is is scored there is an immediate release of tension yeah you're you're no longer going towards something you're where you want to be surprise surprise you feel joy yeah of course the mind says i feel joy because we scored the goal no no the joy isn't caused by scoring the goal it's the release scoring the goal brings the state of expectation to an end. It brings the thoughts and feelings to an end. And as a result of that, the joy which was already there, already present in you, the joy which is the very nature of your being at that moment was able to shine. It's really exciting for me to start with this episode. I actually began following Rupert's path and his journey probably around 2014. I'd spent a lot of time looking at things like Buddhism and quantum physics. For me, Rupert Spira resonated so strongly for many, many reasons. But perhaps the strongest is his ability to articulate in such a clever and simple way and to bring everything together, whether it be how we understand past and future, how we understand the now, how we understand the relationship we have with the outside, and how he seems to make it so obvious that it is all of these things that are happening and occurring within us, not the other way around. It's so, so powerful. And certainly throughout my life, it's been the perfect message for giving me a little bit more grounding. I think the sense of lack and unworthiness comes from allowing our sense of ourself to be conditioned by our, by our past, by our expectations by um, other people's expectations of us. As soon as all of those ideas are mixed in to our sense of ourself, we, we then feel, I'm not good enough, yeah. I'm un- unworthy. That feeling is translated into the body as tension, and we cease performing at um, our best. Rupert kindly invited me to his home to record this. So we journey to Oxford and to what I think is a wonderful conversation. Like I said before, he's played such a big part for me in my life and helping me move beyond old habits into an incredible new space. This in itself is an amazing thing. I hope his episode can serve to be as helpful to any of you listening in too. A massive thank you for listening today. And I'm enormously keen that this be a two-way conversation. If you've got any thoughts, questions, ideas, anything that's been inspired by these conversations, anything you just want to get off your chest and get out there, please send them across in the reviews or just get in touch on social media. It's always a pleasure to be talking about potential, the biggest and most exciting subject there is, in my opinion, for anyone and everything. I'll be back on Thursday for an excellent episode with Rupert Spira. Welcome to I Am.